Hi crafters, Lisa here with Fun Stuff Crafts. Thanks for stopping by my channel today. If you're new to my channel, please click on the subscribe button below. And if you click on the little bell, YouTube should notify you each time I upload a new video. If you're interested in following me on social media, you'll find all those links in the description box below. So what do I have going for you today? Today's Inspiration Friday project is this metal epoxy tray. So we're going to use Design Space, my maker, and some epoxy to create this great project. Perfect for a gift giving event. Give me a second and we'll start right out in Design Space. So here we are in Design Space and I've already picked out my design and I've added in the font and this cute little heart. What I need to do now is I need to really size it up to fit my tray. So what I like to do when I want to size something is I'm going to use the shape feature just to make sure that I've got this sized appropriately. So we're going to unlock it and my tray is 14 inches by 11 and a half inches. So I'm going to make that rectangle that size and then I'm going to send it back and that's going to help me size my design. Nothing worse than creating a design and then having it not fit on your tray. So what we want to do is we want to grab all three elements and we're going to use the align center feature and then that is going to show exactly what my design would look like. Now I want to show you an extra little trick that I've learned about sizing and centering it on the project once you're done. So this is a trick that I learned. If you add in some center marks both on the top, bottom, and each side, and you can see here that I'm centering my box, then I'm going to duplicate it. Grab the wrong box there, but I'm going to duplicate the small one and I'm actually going to do this step four times. So I'm going to align it here using the align bottom feature and then I'm going to duplicate it again and I'm going to do both the left and the right hand side. So then these little square boxes are going to be cut out with my design and it's going to help me center it on my tray. And I'll be able to show you that a little bit better once we get into putting it onto the tray. But it's just a little thing that has helped me out, especially since I'm using a metal tray and it's not see-through, so I'm not able to see measurements really easy. So as you can see now, I have aligned each um, one of those, so I've got four. And if I were to go to the Make It right now, um, I would have some issues because my four boxes are actually different colors. So first let's go ahead and remove the rectangle because I don't want to cut that out. And then what we have left is our design and we're going to send it over to our mat. And you can see right now it has given me two mats. I really only want one mat and I always like to show you guys how not to do it first because believe you me, I've done it numerous times. So what we're going to do is we're going to cancel this and you can see that second one has all those four little alignment squares I have. So let's use the color sync, sync them up so we're all the same color. Now if I hit make it, you can see I still have an issue because Cricut always wants you to use the least amount of vinyl as possible. So it put it down at the bottom. I need to um, attach or weld, either way will work, the squares to the image. Then when I hit make it, you can see the design space is coming back saying, hey, you need a new bigger mat now. So I'm going to go ahead and say OK to that. And you can see now I've just got one mat there and you can see my whole design fits onto that mat just great. So we're going to go ahead and hit continue here. And when we hit continue, the very first thing that Design Space is going to do is look for my 
maker and then I am going to select the premium vinyl and I like to um, select the more. I find that I've got the best cut when I select more. So I've got my fine point and clamp A and we're going to hop over to my machine and I'll meet you over there. So that, now that we've sent our design over to our maker, we've got our light flashing. So what we wanna do is we want to load our mat. Now I'm gonna use a blue light grip mat and I am going to be using Oracle, um, Oracle 651 um, vinyl. I find that to be a really nice vinyl and it's the shiny finish that I'm using. So let's go ahead and get our mat loaded. I've already pre-measured this, so I have it the right um, length with a little bit of extra play on the end. And I'm gonna load my mat and I'm gonna burnish it down very well. And then we are gonna turn our machine because I'm using my larger mat. We've talked about that before. So we'll use the larger mat because my design is larger than the 24. And what we're going to do is load the mat. I'm gonna let the Cricut do its magic with its cutting. And then I will join you back when we get ready to weed this project. So let's unload our mat. I'm gonna push my machine back out of the way. And we're gonna go ahead and remove the vinyl. Just like we always talk about it, do it from the back. I'm gonna go ahead and hang my mat up right away. Get that out of the way. And then what we're going to do is we are going to weed out our design. So now that I've got it off of the mat, what I'm going to do is I'm going to weed it. And sometimes what I like to do before I weed something is just to make sure it's still burnished really well, is to turn it over and just run across it. So we're going to do that. And then I'm going to use my trusty weeding tool, my 651 pen pen that I absolutely love to weed with. So I'm going to go ahead and you'll see a couple of these pieces might need a little bit of help staying down, but for the most part, when I use that more pressure setting, I just find that I get a really nice cut. Just going to a couple of these areas might need just a little bit of help to get started. And that's what I'm going to do. And I just go really slow, just making sure to go slow. Some of my letters are being a little ornery, that apostrophe. But now you can see I'm starting to pull those centers out and if I just go across this very slowly making sure I'm not really having to do my weeding here and just making sure it's staying down on the mat and I'm just working it very slowly and pulling it and then what we'll do is we'll go back and we'll get in all the in-between places with the weeding. So that extra um, pressure, I just think works really well with the permanent vinyl. So I've just started using that anytime I am using a premium vinyl. Now this of course was the 651 vinyl that I use for all my permanent type stuff. But um, the Cricut Permanent Vinyl will be the same way. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and get that all pulled out. And that is the bulk of my weeding right there. And then I'm just going to go through and pick up the insides of the letters. 
insides of their cute little swooshes. And then turn the light just right so I can see that star in the sky. And I've got a little moon here. Make sure I get to the right spot there. And then we're going to work on that trailer. And I'll tell you, the glare is just catching me a little bit here. So, got the trailer there. And then there was a window in the trailer, or the door, the door handle. And then we've also got a window in the trailer that we're going to weed. Okay. And then the last thing I've got is our little fire pit our little campfire. I'm going to go ahead and get him weeded out. So then what I'm going to do is I am going to get my transfer tape and we are going to put some um, transfer tape on this. And I've already got a piece that I had used earlier. So I'm going to go ahead and I like to reuse my transfer paper. So I'm going to go ahead and just straighten it out. Give me a second here. I got it stuck together a little bit. And what I like to do with my um, transfer tape is I like to start in the middle and kind of just let it fall. So I'm going to just go ahead and start. My middle will punch out. I'm just going to go like that and then just smooth it out. I'm going to take my little varnishing tool again. And remember, my little squares here that I use are to help center my project. I want to make sure they stay on there. I don't necessarily want them on the tray, but I am going to use those to center up the project. So now we want to turn it over, and I always like to pull this way because I can tell and make sure, like right there, one of my letters didn't stay. So I just push it back down. Same thing with part of the trailer there. And so I find if you pull from the top, it's not as easy to push it back down. This is a pretty big transfer. So you just want to take your time. Patience here. Works very well if you have patience. And there, just about. Okay, we've got our design all off. Let me get this garbage out of our way. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my tray in. Now my tray is a um, galvanized metal tray that I picked up at Walmart. And I've already went through and sprayed it with a little bit of alcohol. And then I cleaned it up. So what I, the reason why I like to use my Cricut mat here is it just really helps with measurements. So I'm going to lay my tray right up against the corner of my mat. So I know my tray, the base of my tray and the inside here is 14 inches long. And I'll just show you guys that just so you can see that. So if I use one of my um, sewing tape measures, I have got 14, actually it's about 14 and a quarter. Okay. So we want to go seven and an eighth is our middle. So from my mat, I can tell that seven and an eighth is right here. So the other thing we want to make sure we know is we want our, these marks are my center of the tray also. So let's go with the seven first. And I know that that is right about there. So the key now is, I want to make sure before I really push it down, I want to make sure that I am at the same distance from the bottom. So three and three quarters and three and three quarters. So that also helps me making sure that I've got a straight design. Okay, so I really want to make sure that design is straight, okay? Another thing I can do is I could check the bottom of these letters just to double check. 
So if I go to the bottom of the eye, it is right at two and a half. And if I go to the bottom of the H, it is right at two and a half. So I feel really comfortable that I've got myself centered here and I've got it centered both directions, okay? So what I'm gonna do now is I am going to burnish down my design and I don't need my little measuring squares um, at all burnished down. So I try not to push them out because I don't want them on the design. And the one thing you wanna make sure is you don't have any bubbles, especially in this big part where the trees are. One trick you can do is if you do end up with some bubbles is I have a heat gun and sometimes I will do that across my designs. So now we're just gonna very slowly, as you can see, very slowly, I am removing my transfer paper. Now this is permanent vinyl and it is gonna stay on here really well, but I love to use my trays, you know, for carrying dishes, things get wet, you know, especially for this one, it's gonna be for the camper. You're taking stuff in and out to the picnic table, the whole bit. That's why we're gonna put that resin finish on it. So I'm really excited to show you guys how to do the resin piece. We haven't done any resin projects yet, so this will be really fun. Um, to work with. So, you might not be able to see it very clear on there, but I have got no bubbles in my design and I am all set and ready to go. So the next thing we're gonna do is we are gonna mix up our resin and we're literally gonna mix a part A and a part B. We're gonna pour it into our tray and we're gonna let our tray sit for 72 hours and it's gonna be like a glass-like finish. So. Give me a second to get my resin all out and we are gonna be ready to move on to the next step. So a couple things when you're working with resin and there are a couple different types of resin. I really like the amazing clear cast resin. Um, it is FDA approved so I use this with my epoxy tumblers and so it is one that is um, good, you know, if food were to touch it and, and that. So really important when you're thinking about that, especially for the epoxies or for this tray. So you can buy a smaller package and I'll definitely put links down there. I do a lot of epoxy tumblers, so I have moved on to the gallon. I mean, you definitely don't need this much to do this project, but this is what I have on hand. So there's always a part A and there's always a part B. And it is very, very important that you have the exact ratio of each. So it is mix one to one ratio, so the volume. So what I'm gonna start out with, cause this is a pretty, pretty big tray, is I have got these little cups and I'll link these down below. I picked them up at Amazon. And I am gonna do two tablespoons of each. So I'm gonna be very careful and I'm gonna measure out and make sure I've got two, giving me four tablespoons, of course, when I mix them together. Um, now, I think I'm gonna need a second batch, but we're gonna see how much um, that works for us right now. So um, I have put little pumps on mine and one of them, being the A, is definitely, and I'm sorry I'm getting my hands in the way, um, is definitely the thicker part of the um, um, two part. And so it's a little bit harder to pump, um, but really important to be very precise about this. Um, some people I've seen get used to their pumps and they know exactly how far it's you know going to go and what it's going to measure. I have always used separate measuring cups for my epoxy. Um, and then what we're going to do is once we mix them together in a clean cup, which is why I've got another cup sitting here, is we're going to slowly mix it. Because one of the things you want to make sure with the epoxy is you want to mix it so it's nice and clear, and you want to try to get as many bubbles out as possible. Now you will see one of the things I do when I'm mixing my, after my epoxy is all done, is I'm going to take a heat gun to the tray, and what you do with the heat gun is 
it actually pops the air bubbles. Um, so that really helps give you that glass finish. So almost got two tablespoons there. And so I'm just gonna give it one more pump. Okay, I'm gonna set that off to the side. And now you will see the difference of when I do the part B because the part B is much easier, you can see, to pump. So I've seen people use epoxies from marine stores. Um, I just really um, would advise you to look for FDA approved epoxy. Um, I just like it, especially because I do the mugs and then, you know, of course with this tray. So we're gonna move those off to the side here for a minute. And then the other thing I always like to do when I'm working with epoxies is I always put rubber gloves on. Um, you don't want epoxy on your skin. Um, and so just always a good idea to put rubber gloves. I pick up my rubber gloves at Harbor Freight, um, big packages of them. So now what we're gonna do is I've got a third cup and we're going to pour the epoxies in here and I use I call it a popsicle stick. So we're going to just put the popsicle stick in there and we're going to get everything out of this cup. So again, some people will pump and measure all into one cup. Um, I am just like to follow the directions and never had a problem with my epoxy setting up by doing it this way. If you don't get the exact measurements on your epoxy, um, it may not set up. It could be a sticky finish. Um, and so you really want to make sure that you follow the directions. So I'm gonna get all that out of the cup. And then I wanna show you what I have here is I've got my cup here and literally um, I am just going to slowly, and you don't want to do it really, you don't want to do a fast stir. Um, you want to do a slow stir because you don't want to create air bubbles in your um, epoxy. So it's just really slow here, and I normally stir for about two minutes. So I'm going to fast forward through this two minutes. Um, and then I'll show you what I'm finished with, but um, it's kind of hard to see there, but um, it's got kind of a cloudy finish to it right now. And um, as you combine the um, part A and the part B, um, you will get a clearer finish and you want to get rid of those air bubbles. So we'll fast forward through this and I'll join you back when I'm done with the two minutes of stirring here. Okay, we're at our two minutes. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take our tray and what we're gonna do is we are going to pour our epoxy and I like to just spread it out some. You want to get it all out of the cup. A little bit different method than I do when I do my epoxy tumblers. But we're going to get all of this out of here. Okay, and this is why we use gloves. Okay, and so now what I'm going to do is I am going to use my hands. Again, why we use gloves. And I am just going to spread this all over. Okay, no reason to go up the sides. We're just going to go all around. And I'm doing the whole tray, even though what I'm really trying to protect is that vinyl finish. Okay, but I'm doing the whole tray. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around the edges with my finger to 
to do an even. So it just goes up the side a little bit. can see it but sorry my light there is probably not the best on it but what I'm gonna do is I am going to go and grab my heat gun and I really this mixed up really nice I really don't have very many air bubbles but I'm gonna go ahead and do the heat gun on it just to be safe so give me just a second. Let me go grab that heat gun and I will join you back. Okay, so I've got my heat gun and I'm just gonna put it on low and I'm just gonna go through and there are just a few little bubbles and the heat gun literally just pops them. don't need to do much on this at all. set took my gloves off already and I see just one spot I just want to clean up just a little bit and I see a couple little bubbles coming up right here and sometimes what sometimes I find what happens is I let it sit for just you know half hour and I come back and I see if any air bubbles have formed. So basically what we're gonna do now is we are gonna let this sit for about 72 hours. i gonna see if that helps. There you go, guys, I apologize. I should've taken that light off. We're gonna let that set for 72 hours and I will show you guys the finished product. But this was super easy, you guys. We did a design out of Design Space we put it on the tray and we mixed part A and part B of epoxy. It's going to have a glass-like finish and this thing is going to be ready to go. Perfect for a present or for yourself. You choose. Thanks for joining me. And here's the final project. It turned out just great. In fact, I've already given it away as a birthday present. So thanks for joining me for another Inspiration Friday. I hope you like this project using our Cricut Maker and epoxy resin to make this cute metal tray. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and click on the bell to be reminded whenever I upload a new video. If you have any questions, please leave them down below in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. And don't forget, you can check out other DIY projects on my blog at funstuffcrafts.com. Until next week.